The last time I was on the subject matter, I referred to Leviticus 16, verse, well, it's the, chapter 16, and you, you see the verses that has the two goats, goats verse 7, verse 8, and verse 8 reads, And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord, and the other lot for the scapegoat, or Azazel in the original. And I gave the reasons why the scapegoat language came in and who brought it in and how the Christian community developed a doctrine of what that possibly meant, which they were wrong. I'm not going to review any of that. I was told today in the very near future more updates are coming on the website. Look on the pastor's blog and you catch up by either reading or viewing first the videos that you missed. But the Christian teachings on the scapegoat's been off. Some of the best teachers in the world and scholars just didn't get it right. And I gave you the reasons for that. And then we looked at the story in the New Testament that plays out what we read here in the Old, which was just a shadow of things that Jesus, once again, what his life experience that we read through the New Testament gospel records actually meant and how it was fulfilled, which the Old, prophet, the Old Testament prophesied, which would happen, but yet it didn't happen completely in all fulfillment until Christ came on the scene. And we see that played out in a New Testament story where Jesus is in front, front of Pilate, and not just Jesus, but Barabbas was there, and Therefore, you have, and I gave you the reasons why, Leviticus 16 now being played out in the New Testament story of Jesus and Barabbas in front of Pilate. You want the details filled in if this is the first time you're listening or this, you only listen to this one program, you have to listen to the previous to really catch up and understand how I got there. But I want to further continue by reading something else to you concerning the Barabbas Jesus story. I have time, I have a few minutes to do it tonight, so I want to at least start with that as we introduce Azazel once again. Barabbas was a Jewish terrorist in the custody of the Roman police. In Jerusalem at the time, Jesus was arrested and tried for sedition. It was customary at Passover that a prisoner be released by the Roman prelate. See the similar events being played out from the Old Testament to the New Testament? And since Pilate saw no valid capital guilt in Jesus, he offered to release him. At the instigation of Jesus' enemies among the temple authorities, the crowds demanded Barabbas be freed instead. They got their wish. Pilate gave them Barabbas in place of Jesus of Nazareth. There are two honorees, honorees in the story that don't appear on the surface <coughs> of the English Bible. Excuse me. The missing name. In this episode involving these two Jewish radicals, there is a variant in several Greek manuscripts of the Gospel of Matthew. The traditional text of Matthew 27, verses 16 and 17, reads as follows in the New American Standard Bible. At the time, they were holding a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they, the people, gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Barabbas? Or Jesus, who is called Christ? Pilate is asking the group that was gathered, Who do you want me to release to you? According to this translation, and most translations, by the way, 
Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? Now, several manuscripts, however, name the terrorist. Jesus Barabbas. That's the missing name. Not just Barabbas. Jesus Barabbas. Several manuscripts, however, name the terrorist. Jesus Barabbas as having and have Pilate ask, whom do you want me to release for you? And this is what the original manuscripts say too. Who do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? Two Jesuses, just like there were two goats. Do you want release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? Many textual scholars believe the double name Jesus Barabbas was the original meaning. So do I. Everything points to that. They suggest that Jesus was omitted from several Greek manuscripts of Matthew out of reverence. They don't want to insult the Jesus. They don't want to insult the Jesus the Christ or Jesus the Messiah by having Barabbas' first name also identified when it has Jesus Barabbas. So they eliminated the Jesus Bar Jesus part of the Barabbas name. So who was the person that led the charge in removing Jesus Barabbas? and just calling him Barabbas. The church father origin, there you go again, said, quote, in the whole range of the scriptures, we know that no one who is a sinner is called Jesus. Now, where does he get that from any of the scriptures? You really think about it. I don't need crude to make a point. Origin had a brain fart. When he kept, came up with this one. In the whole range of scriptures, we know that no one who is a sinner is called Jesus. If you're referring to, by the way, Jesus, the Messiah, you're correct. It's not like Jesus was not an unpopular name at the time of Jesus Christ, the Christ. Jesus was not the only one being called Jesus at that time. So how could he come up with such nonsense? And here... It's even more amazing <clears throat> that this nonsense stuck and influenced future translations to disguise, not disguise, to keep hidden the truth of how this story was being played out. In Jesus' time, according to exactly what we saw in Leviticus 16. Let's continue, or else I'll run out of time. The second deeper honorary, honorary, excuse me, honorary in the reading, Jesus Barabbas, appears when we note that Barabbas, or Barabbas, is the Hellenized form of the Aramaic name Barabba, meaning, by the way, Son of a father, or son of the father, which is a better translation. <coughs> and the name Jesus in Greek is Jesus, is a Hellenized form of the Hebrew name Yeshua. Thus, 
In a seemingly inconsequential legal decision that still quakes through the centuries, Pilate was in essence the asking, the asking the Jerusalem crowd, which one do you want me to release to you? This is Pilate speaking now to this crowd. Which one of, of the two do you want me to release to you? Yeshua, son of the father, or Yeshua, son of the father? whom his followers call Messiah. Pilate gave up one Jesus for another Jesus, one son of the Father in place of another. He exchanged an assassin for an innocent man who died in his place. This decision surely has the fingerprints of God. And if you heard the Leviticus 16, Story, you know why the reasons. Azazel was a son of God, but Jesus is only the begotten Son of God that did not sin, who became sin for our benefit to rescue us. From eternal damnation. And I ran out of time to read that to you last time when I was preaching on this story in the New Testament in Matthew 27. But I think that further clarifies your understanding of what was being played out according to Leviticus 16 and why. There were two goats. Hazazel. The hidden. Hazazel. You would think, out of sight, out of mind, right? That is the furthest thing from the truth. You may, maybe never heard of him. The last thing he's been is hidden. Not just in the secular world, but the religious world. Just to give you one example. I have time for one more thing tonight. Now, what did I do with it? Was it this? I got so many books, I don't know which one I have things marked. Here, it's this one. The moon star symbol common in Islamic cultures in one aspect also represents the combined identity of an angel incarnate, Azazel. The crescent moon represents Azazel. While the five-point star, a pent pentagram, represents the morning star Venus which is a representative of Satan. If one should draw a circle between the horns of a crescent moon to make it a full moon, one finds the star incorporated within the moon. As the body of the incarnate angel Azazel was so possessed by Satan who entered into him, an evildoer added to evildoer. Though the moon slash star symbol has been adopted by Islam, its origins is of a much earlier date. One may find this symbol adorning many of the flags of Islamic nations, as well as some Abrasax gems and various Sumerian cylinders and sculptures, which, God willing, I'll have time in the future to get into that. The crest and the star was also the symbol of Sabianism. Sabines were known as the worshippers of the host of heaven. The host of heaven are angels. The host of heaven are angels. That's just a very small example of how Azazel has incorporated itself into the religious world. To understand, to understand that Azazel, we have to go all the way back to the beginning. The beginning of this book. I gave, just gave you one location 
of how he is represented in the New Testament through Barabbas. Is that the only location in the New Testament? Certainly not. And God willing, I'll have the time to prove that out to you just like I've proven everything else out. Yes, it's been hidden, but it's been there the whole time. What was that serpent in the garden? Everybody just assumes it was Satan. Was it? I'm not saying Satan was not involved. Don't get me wrong. But it's time for a deep understanding in the, unfortunately, the hidden truths that we find in the Word of God that needs to come out in the open so we know who our enemy is and the power structure in this evil army. The reason I have delayed in teaching on demonology, and let me tell you, when I get to it, you will say, this is a first. You need to put faces and names on who the commanding officers are and who the foot soldiers are and understand how evil, manipulating, and cunning they are. God willing in the future, I'll get to the subject of demonology, maybe a launching point from this Azazel teaching whenever I get done with that. We'll see. You need to pray for this pastor. He's exposing the enemy that most have kept it, kept it, kept, excuse me, <coughs> kept hidden <coughs> when they were called to inform the Christian soldiers, I believe, Every pastor's obligation is to inform their congregation of the spiritual war that we're in and who we're fighting against. I can't get to these subjects fast enough, but I will. Now, if you're interested, I want to hear from you. Play a song. This is your cue to either get on your computer, write me an email, or get on the telephone, leave a message. I want to hear from you. <laughs> 